I'm very happy uh, to be here. Uh, here, four or five, I don't know, uh, very, very brilliant men who have to reflect now on the extreme opposite about um, stupidity. And um, I'm really, really looking forward uh, to this debate because it's a rather open uh, subject and a rather wide subject. Um, but I think we will uh, have two aspects in this subject. We will remember a little bit living under, under circumstances which made it difficult to get intelligent on the one hand. And uh, on the other hand, we will perhaps speak, and we will, uh, it is rather sure that we will speak about the current situation that is uh, internet, computers, computers are stupid, as says uh, David Auerbach on my side. I will start. My name is uh, Thierry Chavel. I'm a journalist from Germany. Um, I will start by uh, presenting our uh, real uh, brilliant uh, podium. And then we uh, go into the debate uh, directly. So on my right, um, we have uh, Ivan Havel, who is a computer scientist, um, who, um, uh, when I'm well informed, I read uh, with Google Translate an interview with him, uh, studied uh, in part secretly uh, in computer sciences. And this gives us already a, a hint uh, to our debate. Uh, because he was a son of the bourgeoisie and he uh, uh, officially didn't have the right to uh, make studies. Um, he studied also after 68, uh, in 69, he, he went to Berkeley, but he came back to uh, Prague. And um, his uh, sub he's a computer scientist, uh, he, he was working about artificial or in the field of artificial intelligence. Um, after 89, uh, he was a co-founder of uh, the Center of Theoretical uh, Studies, which is an interdisciplinary study uh, center at the Charles University in Prague. And he's also a co-founder of the uh, very, uh, I think, very popular, uh, but uh, also high-standing science magazine uh, in Prague, which is called, uh, I hope I pronounce well, uh, Vesmia. Um, um, as uh, the second person, I um, present another uh, computer scientist uh, on my left, which is uh, David Auerbach, who is uh, with uh, 35 years the youngest of our uh, panelists. He, uh, as I understood well, he is a computer scientist. Uh, he was programmer for Google and for Microsoft, which uh, made him so happy that after that he chose uh, to um, follow his real uh, uh, passion. And his real passion is literature, Central European literature. He um, wrote, for example, a very long article uh, about um, Krasna Horkai, um, but he loves also uh, Ingeborg Bachmann, and perhaps he's the only one in the United States who really knows and loves uh, Ingeborg Bachmann, I don't know. He wrote a, a long article also, a long essay um, about uh, Marcel Proust, and um, there's another article which perhaps led him here uh, for this evening, uh, he wrote um, in uh, this uh, very important and uh, high-standing uh, literature magazine in uh, the United States, N plus uh, one, and this article was uh, Stupidity of Computers, and we will speak about that also. Um, so on my left, we have uh, Drago Jansha, uh, who is, um, I, I uh, mean, uh, the, the most uh, known uh, Slovenian uh, author. Many of his books are translated into many languages, uh, uh, if you look in our online magazine, uh, which I'm uh, uh, doing, Perlentaucher.de in, in Germany, you will find six or seven books of the last years which were translated. The last book, which was uh, translated into German, uh, was uh, Northern Lights, which is a novel from 84. Uh, and the last novel, I think, was Baum ohne Namen. I don't know the English uh, title. Um, Janša was also a, a very important figure in uh, the opposition in ex-Yugoslavia. He was an um, 
intervened very often in, in, the, in this uh, uh, very difficult uh, time of the ex-Yugoslavian uh, uh, wars, and um, I'm really looking forward uh, to his um, intervention. He will speak a little bit uh, about the um, internet and uh, reading in the internet and all this uh, debate. And uh, last but not least, uh, to my right, uh, Miklos Harasti, um, who uh, studied philosophy and literature, uh, who played a very important role in the opposition this time in Hungary, um, co-founder of the democratic uh, opposition movement in Hungary. He wrote a book which was uh, very important um, for Western left-wing people. Uh, the German title, uh, I think it was in 75, or it was published in 75 in Germany. Um, the German title was uh, Stück Lohn, and I think the English title was Worker in a Worker's Country. Worker State, um, and um, it was a book about working conditions uh, in, uh, of workers in socialist countries, and um, was really an eye opener for very much uh, for, for for many uh, left wing people in in the Western states who perhaps uh, still had uh, uh, illusions about um, uh, working conditions in uh, these countries. Um, after uh, the fall of the wall, um, Mr. Harasti was a member of the Hungarian parliament, and uh, then from 2004 to 2010, um, the OSCE representative on freedom of media, and uh, he spoke, uh, for example, uh, very clearly out against media laws here in uh, Slovakia in a certain phase. Um, currently, um, as I uh, understand, uh, he is an adjunct professor at uh, the Columbia uh, Law School in New York. Um, I would like to start our debate with uh, Ivan Havel, but first I would like, because um, this is uh, too beautiful, I would like to have uh, David um, uh, read a motto, a sort of motto, which uh, should give us uh, um, stuff to think um, uh, about stupidity, um, about the famous essay of Robert Musil on stupidity. Hello. Uh, this essay is from 1937 and was given in Austria under somewhat uh, strange circumstances. So there is uh, a subtext uh, to hear. Um, the, the best place to start speaking about stupidity might be with the initial difficulty, which is that anyone who wants to talk about stupidity or profitably participate in a conversation about it, must assume about himself that he is not stupid, and he also makes a show of considering himself clever, although doing so is generally considered a sign of stupidity. <laughs> I think uh, Musil made a very important point uh, um, uh, about our debate. Um, uh, what seems to be intelligent in uh, our presence uh, can rather easily seem rather silly 20 years later, um, and um, I think um, uh, one uh, sign of intelligence is to keep this in mind. Um, uh, Mr. Havel, this forum in this year um, is um, dedicated uh, to um, uh, the memory of your brother, and um, I, I followed yesterday evening the debate about truth and lie, um, also a very big subject, and... Uh, Václav Havel uh, was uh, mentioned, and um, it was so serious and so sublime uh, to follow this debate. And on the other hand, um, I didn't know Václav Havel personally, but um, I remembered him as a person who, was, who had very much wit, who had a sense of the absurd, who, li who, who wrote uh, absurd uh, comedies, and um, who liked uh, uh, rock music and all that. So... Um, uh, what is earnest and what is uh, um, uh, comic is perhaps not always so easily to separate. And I had, um, I, there are two authors I would like to um, quote in the, our, our debate, and one of the authors is um, Hans Christian Andersen. There's this famous fairy tale about the emperor's clothes, and there's a child uh, who is, which is saying, um, but he is wearing nothing. And he, this child 
is speaking out a truth which is not uh, which was not official which uh, was not to be said and so was this intelligent to speak out this truth or was it perhaps silly because he uh, brought him uh, this child brought him himself uh, in an uh, uh, um, impossible situation, and was perhaps the role of Václav Havel a little bit comparable of uh, the role um, the, this child uh, in this Andersen fairy tale um, had um, to speak out the truth which others d either didn't see or didn't want to name. Jak jste zmínil, můj bratr měl smysl pro absurditu a Určitě by ho velice potěšilo, kdyby panel o hlouposti byl věnován jeho jménu. Jestli byl v té roli toho dítěte, které řeklo pravdu, to by taky možná se nad tím trošku pousmál. Já si myslím, že on sice celý život psal proti hlouposti, ale proti takové skryté hlouposti. Proti takové, která není hned vidět a, není, a je tedy daleko nebezpečnější. Já si myslím, že vlastně vedle hlouposti je ještě jiná vlast... Vedle hlouposti a naproti tomu moudrosti je ještě třetí vlastnost, a což je e, e, jako vtipnost bláznov, až bláznovství. E, my nemůžeme říct, že blázen je moudrý, ale nemůžeme říct, že je hloupý. A, e, e, takže tyto, t, v tomto trojuhelníku těch možností e, se asi tak pohybují jeho postavy. Ale e, myslím si, že e, jako v jeho případě ten... E, ten nástroj absurdity byl využit do důsledků. So uh, this uh, triangle would be uh, foolishness, stupidity and, uh, and uh, wisdom. Wisdom. Okay. So we'll try to be uh, wise or foolish. I uh, we will see. <laughs> um, I I'm thinking very much um, also of another author, and this is a very, very famous phrase. Uh, I, I looked for the English translation. Um, um, and um, uh, this author is Immanuel Kant. It's a quotation which is uh, very serious and very famous. It's from his essay from about uh, what is uh, enlightenment. And it's the first phrase of this essay. Uh, Kant is saying, um, enlightenment is um, man's emergence from his self-inflicted immaturity. Um, and um, this is a rather interesting phrase because, uh, Mr. Harasty, um, this phrase is saying uh, something like uh, that um, it is our decision to be, uh, to be stupid. We can decide to be stupid, but we can also decide Uh, to uh, know, sapere aude, uh, have the courage um, to use uh, your understanding. This can be easy, in, for example, in democracies. It can be much more difficult in contexts uh, which uh, forbid um, uh, um, some uh, access to knowledge. Um, uh, What, what is uh, your experience um, in, if you think back um, on in socialism, but I know also that you prepared um, a paper which is not about the uh, past, but about the present. Um, but try also um, to uh, have uh, in, in, in your head uh, these uh, two situations. The past situation of um, a regime which put... Um, Uh, limits to the people, which tried to, 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 to keep them silly, and uh, perhaps um, the uh, current situation, uh, which is uh, for, uh, perhaps the opposite of that. Um, but, uh, do you think that um, uh, too much information 
can also have uh, an effect on our brain. Um, first of all, let me apologize for the Hungarian speakers in the audience because I didn't know about the possibility to speak in Hungarian and I, I prepared my, myself for the English of it. Well, if you allow me, I would separate mm -hmm. the two issues, and if you allow me to uh, talk about my present future subjects later, and mm -hmm. first very briefly okay. answer your question. As we all know, the past was organized stupidity. Um, it was enforced organized stupidity, and these protest movements, that of Czechoslovakia, that of Poland, that of Hungary, and the, that of the heroic Russians, um, all started with fight against our own stupidity. It was, especially in the 70s, 60s, 70s, it was nothing but fight against self-censorship. Mm. And it only later developed into polit politics about fight against institutionalized censorship and with the aim of abolishing institutionalized censorship. So uh, the answer is perhaps that um, fight against stupidity, which is not fight against yourself, is futile, is worthless. worthless. It, is, it is something that will not lead to the desire, desired um, uh, endeavor, abolishment, abolishing uh, uh, outside in infrastructures of censorship. It will simply perpetuate organized stupidity. Okay, but um, uh, what is our situation now? Please, please. Uh, uh, Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It will be, mm -hmm. I will try to keep it short. Um, when I prepared for this panel, which was in our kitchen, uh, <laughs> there is a funny postcard pinned on to the wall of our kitchen, which, which has the, um, which has the uh, sentence, Never underestimate the power of stupid people in great numbers. That's the, and it's a poster of a horror film featuring the early Ronald Reagan with a revolver in his hand and embracing supportively a woman who is visibly very much in fear. And um, po probably a caption from a film. Okay, so there is the force of stupid people attacking in great numbers. That's frightening indeed. But what about the force of stu stupid people hiding in great numbers? And so what about, to name it plainly, what about the force of stupidity that can be mobilized by anonymity? Uh, today the whole world is out to celebrate the revolution of anonymity, which, so they say, will finally make censorship stupid. But what, uh, what I fear is, what I also fear, is another type, because Central Europeans also always fear something. <laughs> so we have to fear something to be good Central Europeans. What I fear is another type of censorship, the one over meaningful human discussion, debate, um, uh, which is facilitated by anonym, anonymity, that, that type of censorship. Yes, anonymity can start revolutions, but when used by stupid people, it can start pogroms. Uh, anonymity can break illegitimate secrets when clever whistleblowers use it for the public interest, but anonymity can also annihilate legitimate privacy and useful secrets of clever cooperations or of meaningful working processes. So when anonymity, especially when anonymity as it is today, is going enforceable by too clever technology, like in the case of WikiLeaks, you may believe you are God and you endanger, you, you enforce breaking secrets and endanger lives in the process in your rightfulness. 
We live in an interconnected world where theoretically everybody is a journalist. Well, before they, it will take some time before they all will have a name, author's name, by generating content, as we, as we say, and until then they will post, publish anonymously. And uh, anonymity of content in today's world, since internet, is believed uh, to be democratic per se, by itself. Probably because it is mixed up with the very democratic anonymity of casting a vote in the ballot. And um, I believe that that mix-up is stupid and um, can lead to trouble. Prejudice, hatred, defamation, libel, meanness, simply illogical and irrational argument feels so good anonymously. And um, in an internet-connected world, you don't have to go to special places like underground wars of, or toilet wars used to be <laughs> in the past. Um, anonymous rubbish comes right to you en masse. No border lies and can stop it. No puni puni punishing measures can stop it. No filter can stop it. And no culture can stop it. And the worst news is not even your own culture can stop it. So, to finishing it is... Uh, it, 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 back to literature a little bit. In today's world, you realize that um, at least a half, if not more, of the joy reading a good argument or a well-elaborated opinion is due to the fact that you know who is speaking. It is a well-meaning error to believe that a good argument is good whoever says it. Not even the truth is true if not told by a person from whom you are ready or able to accept it. That's bad, but that's human nature. Putting a name preferably above, not even below, an opinion is a matter of politeness. It offers you half of the value of that opinion, whether you like it or not. And uh, this is why the old press has developed the institution of the pundit, of the opinion writer, of the columnist. Okay, if columnists have names, you know they are not columnists. Columnists. <laughs> okay. Finally, why I'm saying all this? I am about getting it punished, abolishing it, preventing it. Here comes the Voltarian part <laughs> of the message. I believe that um, um, there is, in today's interconnected world, there is simply no rule of law way of handling libel, defamation, hatred, etc. It's simply time to give up the belief that content, I'm sorry, content at all can be controlled territorially. It cannot be controlled territorially. It, the states have to make peace with the fact that territorial control over content is over. It simply not exists anymore. This hyperlink, global upload, local download, all this makes it. Only selectively, arbitrarily, in naturally in a politicized way can you control content. So if you don't want a word that my blogger is a columnist, and your blogger is a columnist, where people in power tell you who is right and who is wrong and whose opinion or facts are acceptable, who is not, you have to make peace with this. Whether it's good news or bad news, it's up to you to decide. Okay, so we are in the middle um, of uh, the debate um, about the Internet, and since uh, the Internet exists, there's uh, this question... Um, whether there is uh, an intelligence of the crowd or a stupidity of the crowd. Um, anonymity is uh, one of the subjects uh, in this debate. Um, uh, there are these anonymous uh, commentaries under blog articles or so. On the other hand, uh, there are also institutions like, let's say, the Wikipedia, 
which is an anonymous, anonymous uh, way of creating knowledge and discussion, and um, which is also a no new way uh, of writing, uh, giving new ways also of um, commentating about certain uh, assumptions and all that. Um, you have uh, the article and you have the backside of the article with the discussion of the assumptions. It's also, um, uh, it's also uh, changing um, the way uh, in which people write. This sort of anonymous writing didn't exist before uh, the internet and uh, in a way the internet in itself was created by anonymous people, by uh, the free software movement and uh, things like that, um, who didn't claim uh, 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 neither uh, license fees nor a great uh, um, uh, popularity of uh, their names in it. So anonymous, anonymity has uh, two uh, sides um, uh, in it. And I would like to give the word to uh, Drago Jancha, who is, um, I think, a little bit reflecting on how internet is um, changing the way we write and the way we read. Uh, so please, uh, Drago Jancha. Yes, but just a remarks to what you have mm -hmm. said just now, you both. Uh, uh, in the time when I'm using uh, internet in less time, I'm more and more amazed in what kind of the world I am living, among what kind of a people I am living. Before, I've read newspapers, I've read books, uh, I saw that people, uh, that there are signatures, there are faces, and somehow now, uh, through this anonymity, uh, I really uh, cannot understand uh, how much hatred, etc., is in the air. In public discussions, we are confronted with unbelievably simple-minded reactions on every issue. Political, literary, art, science, everything. In politics, very often with uh, unbearable brutality, and yes, stupidity also. But all the time in the safe, and ha uh, safe heaven of an uh, anonymity. And this is a big problem for me that uh, I'm, now I am realizing that people are much more dangerous than I, <laughs> I felt before and I, think, I was thinking before. As a user, it's a, it a, it's a problem of ethics somehow uh, and, and the society. But as a user, as a simple user, I am now a little scared because we have two uh, philosophers of, uh, of a computer, two computer scientists, so I am speaking just a poor story, as a poor storyteller and a user of internet. As a user, I have a problem with reliability. We handle information that we cannot believe many times and, and uh, their authenticity. Uh, we cannot check them today. You mentioned Wikipedia. Uh, on, on my article about me in Wikipedia, there are many mistakes, there are many... You can change it, uh, also <laughs> anonymously. Yes, but I, I don't want to enter in this, to, to speak about myself in, the, in the Wikipedia. And so I, I don't know if they were right wrong about me, what's, what's about others? So uh, there, are, there are some problems with this. And uh, we have gross information, but nonsense for hierarchy of a, of a, of a thinking, of a ideas. We, we have no order. So th this is why I am confused with uh, uh, using internet. Sometimes I see it as a, as a, as a, as a big cha chaotic uh, uh, space. I don't deny uh, you, uh, uh, that, that, that this is the most efficient thing uh, that, that, that we uh, it, it came to, uh, to us. It, it's very efficient and very useful, etc. If you just uh, put the word stupidity in the computer, and I did it some days ago, uh, you, you can learn everything. All quotations, uh, Latin word, uh, et etymology, everything. Even, uh, but I, I realized that not, not only I, that was uh, 900 33,000 visitors on this page. And it was a few days ago. Nowadays, there are maybe more than a million people who are interested in stupidity. Uh, so this is uh, the problem that I have as a, as, a, as a simple user. As a writer, I have a, 
some deeper problems, but maybe I can speak it later. I don't want to stop okay. This, okay. Uh, this part of discussion. <laughs> okay, so David, um, you wrote a um, uh, marvelous, very beautiful essay about the stupidity um, of computers, but you speak about the stupidity of computers, not of the internet. What is your point of view uh, in this debate? Um, Please take the microphone. Well, uh, I think I'd like to approach it from, from two angles, one of which was that I myself was an anonymous blogger for many years, uh, and in fact my Proust essays were published anonymously. And um, I would put a conditional defense on it by saying that no matter how stupid they may have been, I would still defend them over many of the signed essays published by America's pundits in proclaiming what I think was the largest and most damaging lie that I've experienced in my lifetime, which is uh, the Iraq War in America. Um, and those pundits that proclaimed so clearly that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and therefore uh, we needed to invade his country um, have not suffered any consequences uh, despite uh, their names being signed to those uh, articles and editorials uh, and everyone knowing who they are. Many of them are still with us today. Um, but more generally, uh, so there is that defense. <laughs> more generally speaking, uh, I think stupidity is ubiquitous enough that when I read that Robert Musel quote, that was from 1937, and there was, and the internet did not exist back then, but I did not get the sense that stupidity existed in any, any less proportion than it does now. It might have been a bit easier to ignore because one can go on the internet and encounter uh, astounding amounts of, of stupidity without even uh, leaving one's home. But um, like I said, I do not know that the proportion is so different. But I think there's also the issue of what stupidity is because one can be wrong without being stupid and one can also be stupid without being wrong. Um, one definition that used to come up frequently in computer science circles and elsewhere um, was that stupidity was making, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Um, I looked for the source of this and uh, the, the quote originally refers to insanity, not stupidity, but I think that gives too much credit to sane people, so I would like to, uh, to propose that stupidity is, uh, is, the better, is the better word that should be defined in that way. Um, Robert Musil distinguishes uh, between two types of stupidity, but, uh, a less dangerous and a more dangerous kind. The less dangerous kind being um, a lack of intelligence and the more dangerous kind being a failure of intelligence. And when I speak of the stupidity of computers, I'm speaking of merely the lack of intelligence, that computers do not, under, do not have a sense of meaning, that our words to them do not mean and do not have any, any particular attachments. They are mere symbols that are being manipulated as one manipulates numbers and sums. Um, the failure of intelligence, I think, comes when we use computers and either expect them to do our thinking, to do the sort of difficult sort of thinking from us, uh, for us, or uh, we ask computers to repeat back to us our own prejudices and stupidities and think that because they're coming from a computer that they are somehow more objective and truthful. Um, the advantages, I think, that, that we gain from, from computers, from technology, from the internet, is that there is a greater ability for us to communicate with each other and there is more information. Uh, good and bad information, but more information. And um, I would not be here tonight, which I am happy to be, happy to be invited, were it not for the internet. Um, but the increase in information is a tremendous problem and I think that in some ways it is, it is at the very root of the problem of modernity, which is that the problem of modernity is not um, coming from technology per se, but from 
a justifiable loss of certainty and what we thought to be true because of an increase in knowledge, an increase in perspective, an increase in that which is foreign to us. And that there, and I think there, there, there are three reactions to this, and there are three reactions that become more extreme as orders of magnitude more information is thrown at us. One is to retreat back into the dogmas of the past and pretend that they are still true, and I would call, I would call that lazy and, and stupidity. Another is um, to give up on the possibility of being certain of anything whatsoever, and I think uh, that is also lazy and somewhat stupid, and I think that one can see that in certain, certain uh, philosophers of the 20th century who will go unnamed here. Uh, or the third option, which I don't think is stupid, which is to modestly go about the very difficult work of trying to figure out what we still can know truly and honestly. Um, Jakob Burkhardt said that, uh, that it, in, I think, the late, eight, 19th cent the late 19th century that we were entering the age of oversimplification. And that, I think, uh, has, only, has only become more and more true as we ask computers to simplify for us and take their simplifications at face value as we simplify ourselves to present ourselves in, uh, uh, to computers and have them present themselves, present ourselves back to us. And there are many advantages and comforts to over the simplifications, but I'd like to paraphrase Bertrand Russell and say that um, the advantages of oversimplification are the same advantages as the advantages of theft over, hard, over honest toil. Um. Ivan Havel, um, David Auerbach um, um, mentioned one function of the uh, internet, uh, which is that we get uh, into communication much easier than in former times. Um, uh, my simple question would be, can you imagine uh, the socialist uh, system, the socialist countries of former times with the internet? Would it have been possible uh, to stay with the internet? I'm thinking also of a current time uh, dissident like IYY who is using very much the internet and who loves, for example, Twitter. What would you s uh, say about that? Well, it's uh, difficult to, uh, to uh, imagine. I have been told that I will speak Czech, so Czech. It's difficult to imagine how the politics of our politics was made by us, the politics of dissent, kdyby byl internet, protože tehdy to všechno záleželo na tom, kdy, jak se lidi mohli setkat, komunikovat, informovat a jedno z nejdůležitějších způsobů, jak komunikovat, bylo přes zahraniční vysílačky. Takže koliká se stalo, že se někdo dověděl o tom, že jeho soused je zavřen z hlasu Ameriky oklikou. Toto by bylo daleko snažší, ale já si myslím, že ta že společnost s internetem je dost odlišná a sám mám různé smíšené názory. Protože například e, Wikipedia, kterou, která tady byla zmíněna, já ji hrozně rád používám, protože sám jsem nevzdělaný a e, tam mi aspoň pomůže e, najít možnost, kterou si pak třeba ověřím jinak. Na druhé straně, e, já jsem se před asi dvěma lety přihlásil do Facebooku ze zvědavosti jak to funguje, protože se všude mluví o sociálních sítích. A teď musím denně mazat asi pět žádostí o přátelství a neobyčejně mě to otravuje, ale to by nevadilo. Co, co, si, co považuji za choulostivé je to, že když tam probíhá nějaká diskuze, nějaká debata, tak to vlastně není debata. Debata se musí odehrávat mezi lidmi, kteří jsou přítomni a dívají se každý druhému do očí. A to znamená, že každý si stojí za tím, co řekne. 
kdežto na těch diskuzích, které se objevují na, na internetu, tak jednak tam lidi jsou jako pod různými podivnými přezdívkami anonymně, ale za druhý nevidím toho člověka, takže já mu nemůžu odpovědět. Takže ten druhý, který mu odpoví, odpoví ještě horším způsobem, nějak z prostě nebo podobně. Čili po této stránce to upadá. Já si ovšem myslím, já jsem takový choroby, chronický optimista. Si myslím, že se s tím vyrovnáme za 20-30 let, že už to bude jako normálně stejně, jako kdysi byl knih tisk běžnou věcí a nikdo se teď nepozastaví nad nevýhodami knih tisku. Jistě by se našli nějaké, ale ani mě nenapadají. Tak to je moje poznámka k tomu, té hlouposti. Já bych nikdy neřekl, že počítač je hloupý, protože já považuji hloupost za vlastnost vědomé bytosti. A teprve člověk, který používá hloupě počítač, způsobuje hloupost, ale za to ten počítač nemůže. Mr. Harrelsty, um, you uh, spoke uh, uh, already about um, this subject, but I would like to uh, put another question in this context. Um, uh, you were a um, representative on uh, the freedom of media um, in the OCE, uh, but now we see that uh, media have another problem than uh, censorship. Um, private finance media very often have a simple problem with business models. In Germany, there's just a, a paper which seems to be dying, an important paper, Frankfurter Rundschau. Um, do you think that um, the public sphere is uh, changing and um, how do you comment on this change? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it... Um, um, Ivan spoke of my heart when he expressed his hope that with time And part of that time is finding right or better business models for the internet. The same state of affairs that we are so accustomed to in the print press will develop in the internet as well. What is the situation uh, in the print press which, to which we are so accustomed? It seems natural, as, as, as Ivan said. You have rubbish. You have yellow papers, boulevard, tabloid, different nations call it different way. Tons of, tons of rubbish in the print press. Nevertheless, there is a club of self-regulation. Um, owners, editors, journalists with a proud um, devotion to ethics and to public interest. Whether it is regulated by a nationwide body or in-house, it doesn't matter. The issue is they want to be accountable for what they say. They can correct what they did. It's not about being impeccable. It's not about being faultless. It is about being responsive. And internet with this self-labeling and finding the right way to finance responsible content will, will have to evolve into two big parts club of responsible democracy for the sake of, uh, journalism for the sake of democracy, which wants to be just like print press used to be the parliament of public opinion, and the ocean of stupid rubbish. I'm so sorry to say, people who, who feel uh, the urge for self-expression, and they have to have the right for self-expression, and they have to have the freedom to develop always new ways of communication, and they have to have recourse to, to connectivity machines, which is a powerful tool against tyranny, but journalism on the internet will depend on this ability of evolving into noble, sorry to say, somewhat elitist clubs of good journalism. Um. Drago Jansha, do, do you see it um, like that also? If we think back, for example, 
um, at the time of the uh, ex-Yugoslavian uh, wars, um, the press not always was an instrument of truth. Very often the press was an instrument of lie and propaganda. So um, wouldn't the Internet in this phase would rather have helped against um, these propaganda machines which uh, at the end of communism uh, got wilder than ever. What do you think about it? You played an important role in it. No, I don't believe. I think mm. that uh, internet would help to do the whole story which happened in Yugoslavia. Uh, that was not only newspapers, that was, that was not only writers who were also involved, some of them, and propaganda people. Uh, there was one simple social problem that Yugoslavia was dictatorship. Yugoslavia was dictatorship. If it wouldn't be, uh, the, it was not the, uh, the, the an, a, a hatred between the, the, the some tribes, etc., as, as later was described Yugoslavian situation. Of course, there were there were there were tensions between Muslims and uh, Serbs, and between Croats and Serbs, etc. On and in one corner, also egoistic Central European Slovenians with their own interests and so on. That was variety of all these interests, etc. But there was no place to discuss this pro this uh, this variety of interests because there was a strong army and strong communist party with central community and they couldn't change. All around the Europe things were going uh, in different way, but in Yugoslavia they couldn't. And so it was, and then it started with civil movements in Slovenia, a variety of civil, civil movements, uh, from punk to gay movement to uh, literary movements, etc. And then it was the, the pod was open, and then nationalism, social, in, uh, socialistic, uh, socialist, social interests, uh, and other interests were involved. So internet in this kind wouldn't help. Internet can help in democracy, I believe. And it, it can also spoil the democracy, as we just realized, <laughs> I think. David Auerbach, if you think back, um, for example, three years ago, um, of uh, the uh, Iranian uh, protests in which Twitter uh, played a very important role, or let's also s think about this uh, a rebellion in which also the social networks uh, played a role. Um, are you of the same opinion about these, these effects of the internet on public sphere um, uh, as our four uh, speeches? Um, I, think, I, I, I think that the claims about the role of Twitter in, in Iran and Egypt are, have been greatly exaggerated. Um, that it played some role seems certainly possible, but um, I am not at all convinced that it played some decisive role that made these protests in some way different from, uh, uh, from, from, from past protests. Um, I think it is, it is uh, to the extent that it may, that it's, did make it a bit easier for information to get out and be spread elsewhere, not within, not within the terms, not within the country once it was cracked down, but to other parts of the world. I think that that was a positive effect, but I do not think that it was, uh, but again, that is, not, that is not necessarily what one thinks of as, uh, as, as being central. Nonetheless, you know, one, can know much more about what is going on in Iran than one know than one can know about what is going on in North Korea, um, but that is you know that is a function of uh, of more of the state and technology secondarily. Um, so um, I, I suppose again I I may be recommending a, a somewhat pragmatic course in saying that. Potentiality, certain so, uh, there, there is certainly a potential there, and you have people. You have there are those who ha have hyped it beyond all uh, beyond all measure. Uh, in you know, in America, we have had multiple tech booms and crashes at this point because every time someone proclaims that uh, that some technology will change the world forever. Uh, on the other hand, um, I, I think that doesn't that doesn't immediately mean that this that that there is no benefit to be derived from it whatsoever. We had a bit of a uh, of a of a of a natural disaster a few weeks ago in New York City, 
and um, uh, there were power outages, um, and people were cut off and were having trouble getting food uh, or trapped in their houses. And through Twitter and even through Facebook, as much as I am not particularly fond of Facebook, people were able to spontaneously organize where um, and help out people that uh, the that the government was was uh, not was not helping or had not yet gotten to. And I don't think that would have been as easy. Uh, 10, 20 years ago, and for me that is a tangible benefit that I can't discount. Can I add just one sentence to, uh, yeah, just, yeah, just sure. a sentence to uh, former Yugoslavia, maybe I was not clear enough. Yugoslavia was not such a dictatorship as we can face now in China or Iran, Iran etc., or uh, as it was other uh, Eastern European countries. Uh, the situation in Yugoslavia was uh, from 60s quite open, quite liberal, so we translated a lot, and even in press that was kind of freedom, but political system couldn't follow this uh, liberalization and, and openness in Yugoslavia. We had open border, that was different. That was big difference between Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Yugoslavia and other Eastern countries. But political system was not ready to follow the freedom and the internet wouldn't change this, you know, I'm afraid, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. Hmm? Um, I have one tweet to communicate with you. Twitter, here it, I hope it's within 140 characters. And also would like to say something about the evolving uh, public sphere as the uh, friendly guide in the new democracies, uh, which is, as I'm a Hungarian, and I have to say something about it. So, um, on Twitter, you can learn who our revolution is against. But only through journalism can you learn what our revolution is for. So it is very important to make difference between... Media is not journalism. There are plenty of media forms hosted by the internet today. They are connectivity machines. They are, they are fantastic. Never, this is the dream come true about total connectivity. That's, that, from Walter Benjamin to... to to Hans Magnus Enzensberger, and everybody was dreaming about this with different tools of, with different technological tools, and now it did come about. And, but that's not journalism. Journalism has to be real discussion, looking into our virtual, into virtual eyes at least, it has to be. And it has, I'm sorry, it has to have a name. You are angry with those people who, who believed in the Iraq theory, uh, but you must be happy that you know their names. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't know their names. Uh, Le uh, later, if you allow me, I would like to talk something about the evolving new situation uh, with the public sphere in, in some new democracies and in many parts of the world, which is worrying. I'm since I'm the only person who comes from the internet here, <laughs> um, I'm a little bit, um, uh, I have a little bit on the, um, uh, I would like to, to, to play uh, the Advocatus Diaboli, and I'm um, thinking about the role of journalists, of intellectuals, of books, and all this a sphere which is so much um, regretted here, and I'm thinking about a figure which is perhaps should play also a role in our debate because it's a debate of, uh, about stupidity. I think there is also, and there was also, um, sort of a very special uh, stupidity, which was the stupidity of intelligent people. Um, we have this term of um, youthful uh, idiot, uh, which was uh, in communist era, uh, given uh, by communist parties and, uh, and very the, often to... Uh, the Russians call it Gore Uma, which is... <laughs> um, uh, very often uh, was given to um, Western intellectuals by uh, Eastern uh, uh, European uh, um, uh, power uh, centers. So, uh, Ivan Havel, um, is it really um, only the fact that somebody writes with his name and s says his name and speaks 
in his name that um, gives a security that his intervention is democratic. Well, of course, uh, samozřejmě, co jsem měl na mysli, je debata. Že v debatě člověk nemůže být anonymní. A teprve pak ta debata má smysl. Pokud jde o informování, tak tam ta, to ručení za to už nemusí být tak osobní, ale přivádí mě to k jistému rozdílu, který se někdy zapomíná. Tak jako je rozdíl mezi lží a nepravdou, lež je nepravda, která je schválně nepravdivá, tak může být taky dvojí druh pravdy. Pravda, za kterou ručím nějak a pravda tak jako opakovaná po někom nebo omylem nebo podobně. Já bych tady možná chtěl poznamenat tři etapy naší historie, kdy hloupost měla různé podoby. Ta první podoba byla v 50. letech, kdy řada inteligentních lidí, vy jste se zeptal na to jako inteligence versus hloupost, jo. řada inteligentních lidí v pocitu, že mají přístup k pravdě, jako podepsali tedy svůj, svoji víru v komunismus. Pak to sami nemohli pochopit, dodnes mají s tím potíž, jak to vysvětlit. Druhá etapa byla v 70. léta, kdy režim od nás nechtěl víru, chtěl předstírání víry. Čili tam nastoupil druhý druh hlouposti vlastně, že lidé nemysleli, jestli mluví pravdu nebo něco, za co chtějí ručit, ale pouze, že mluví to, co se chce slyšet a co jim neublíží v nejbližším, jako v ne, bezprostředně neublíží. A třetí etapa je dnes, kterou já bych nazval krize horizontu. Co tím myslím? Lidé si zvykli, a možná, že na tom má i podíl ten určitý tedy ten tržní mechanismus a podobné věci, si zvykli dívat se nepříliš daleko do budoucnosti. I členové parlamentu se dívají do budoucnosti čtyř let nebo kolika mají volební období a co bude potom, je nezajímá. Nějak se to promítá i do lidí, i když by to nepřiznali, že myslejí na okamžitý prospěch, bezprostřední užitek, včetně majetku, ale nemyslejí na to, co bude s námi za sto let. Um. We uh, will have to uh, stop our debate on uh, 2050. So um, I would very much like to um, open the debate also to the public, perhaps um, since we had a rather harmonious podium here about um, uh, stupidity and intelligence in history and in current times. Uh, I, I, I would be really interested um, whether there would uh, be uh, some questions about uh, the members of the podium. So we have um, uh, 15 minutes uh, to discuss, um, but uh, perhaps before uh, discussing, I, I can read um, um, an information by the, um, by the organizers of the podium. Um, Uh, and this is information about the film which will be shown tomorrow uh, morning. I, so I read the information. Aside from the Central European Forum uh, 2012 panel discussions, the organizers would like to invite you all 
uh, to a movie screening of an excel excellent uh, 2012 Berlin film, uh, Festival Silver Bear winning Hungarian film, um, Just the Wind, based on an actual series of killings of uh, Romani people in Hungary that claimed the lives of eight people in less than a year, Benedict <coughs> Fliegauf portrays the pogrom-like atmosphere which breeds such violence. So it's perhaps also a little bit in context to our subject. The movie will be screened tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the morning in Cinema Mladost on it's difficult to pronounce for me, Vjesdoslavovo Square, and will be followed by a discussion. Excuse me, I'm, my Slovak is not uh, perfect. Um, so, are there any questions about stupidity just, in history? I would just like hmm? to, to touch yes. the topic. I wanted to speak uh, about it. I, I, I'm not going to speak long, but just, just because Robert Musil was mentioned several times here. I've read his short story some nights ago before I came here. And I asked myself, uh, who would today... Um, at, at the end of the book, I learned that Musil's stories were published in newspaper. A rather complicated story, not very easy. His feltons, which are also <laughs> literature, etc., it was published in newspaper. And I asked myself, uh, who would publish today in this newspaper? Maybe in some literary magazine with 500, that circulation of 500, etc. And I said, why, why, maybe Musil would today put it on the internet, his stories. But who would read it? So this is the problem. And I think we, uh, we must not skip this problem uh, 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 which we have here with, uh, I, I believe your Perlin Tauher is an excellent invention and very useful and so on. But, and I also believe that uh, we, we, we must say farewell to the, to the paper, newspaper, that it will be digital sooner or later, journalism, but, but about writing, how to read a novel or does something little complica more complicated on the internet, I don't believe. And I, I found some answer, I'm sorry, David, I didn't read your book about uh, the stupidities of a computer, but I've read recently Nicholas Carr, The Shallows, you know the book, what the internet is doing to our brain. I think uh, it's important to, to, uh, to know that uh, in internet we cannot read the, 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 the literature. He says, uh, it has um, al uh, altered the way of our mind, mind's work. Uh, the web encourages us to click and flick. Soon all our brains want to do is click and flick. We stop reading novels and before we know it, uh, the linear literary mind becomes yesterday's mind. So I don't believe that literature will work uh, on the internet. The internet has a different way of uh, thinking, different way of approaching uh, the, the problem. It's very useful for information, but uh, it's not useful for this sensitive thing of a metaphors, of a paradoxes, everything what is in literature. No, I didn't allow uh, my books to, uh, to be uh, on the internet by now. If they will pay good, maybe I will do it. <laughs> So, I think it's the, the, the uh, Umberto Eco says if you read uh, one page uh, uh, on the on the ebook also, then you immediately when you turn the page you forgot forgot what what, uh, what you were you were reading. That's his point. I don't know why he is convinced so, but it's it's it is a possibility of course ebook, but. Uh, I believe that the uh, silical crystals are a mystery that I don't understand. It's like a transcendent. But I don't believe that it's the biggest invention in the history. The biggest invention for me is alphabet, simple alphabet. You can, with 25 of, uh, uh, letters of Slovenian alphabet, or uh, possibly more or less in some other alphabet, you can do everything. You can fly, you can imagine, you can love, you can hate, etc. And it was maybe more important than that, that mysterious and beautiful uh, invention or, uh, of uh, silical crystals. <laughs> yes, but there were also uh, really serious arguments uh, by Plato against writing uh, he said uh, that it's uh, bad for the memory and things like that. So. 
What, mm. what is that for me? But writing, 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 scripture. Well, Maybe for Gutenberg, mm. books mm. were only for writing, not for reading. I, I would certainly add that, that the, the human body, the human mind, and, um, uh, and any human language is, is ridiculously more complicated than anything that uh, technology and computers have managed to come up with. And once again, the danger from technology is that we, uh, as it becomes as it becomes an increasingly ubiquitous mirror of ourselves, we will only see the aspects of us that we reflect in technology. So, okay, uh, we, have, we have 10 minutes. Uh, are there questions? Uh, there's a uh, hand raising. Uh, Uh, more than a question, it's a, a contribution to what we have been talking here in this panel. Uh, I want to make a contribution from... But not too long, because we only have 10 minutes. No? Uh, it's quite long, but I will try to speak fast. <laughs> so the first thing about blogs and rule of law in Internet. Uh, there is a rule of law, and it's very important. Here in Europe we have ACTA, and also we have CETA now. But also you will have it in the United States. You have SOPA and PIPA. But it's not only at the... Uh, it's supranational level. You also have it in the national level. You have it in Spain with seeing the law, and also you have it in Germany with the GEMA. No? This is the first point. Second thing, and also it's very important this thing because the new social movements, the new citizen movements, it's very important this space, internet. But we will talk about this tomorrow. About the blogs. Uh, uh, the important thing, it's not the anonymity, uh, but the transition to the internet 2.0, no? Uh, you can upload, you can share your opinions, no? And this is important for what? Because you have free speech, you have deliberation. Then this is important from the democratic aspects, no? But also you have production of knowledge. You, have so, you also produce uh, social communities. Uh, about reliability. Uh, you cannot believe all things that you read in internet, this is clear, no? Uh, but the thing is that uh, in the network, in the digital culture, there is one thing which is called meritocracy, okay? And there is people who is following people who really deserve to be following, really deserve to be listened, okay? So we have this point for this kind of organization, no? There is an intelligent out-organization of the information sources. Uh, second aspect, Wikipedia. Uh, first thing, it's not anonymous or chaotic, okay? There is a meta-editorial group of all Wikipedia, but also you have an editorial group for each language, no? Uh, and also about the reliability on Wikipedia. Uh, if you don't like your entrance, you can edit yourself. And also you have forum discussions for each entrance, so there's no problem with that. Yes, but you can do it anonymously also. Uh, you can do it also anonymously, but this is just for a safety thing, no? But you can do it, this is the point. But the most important thing is how we cooperatively and horizontally, we open and free knowledge. And this is very important, no? About the public sphere, uh, the important thing about the social networks, no, it's that it allows you a post-mediatic communication. What do I mean with that? It's the horizontal self-auto-narration of what is happening. It's a post-mediatic communication. You uh, overcome the vertical hierarchy of the mass media nowadays. And just for finishing, the last point, discussion. What was saying the man on the left, that I don't remember the name, sorry for that. Uh, discussion, I totally disagree eh? that, it, you don't, uh, that you have to be present to discuss anything, no? uh, to, de to defend your arguments. And now, uh, I'm, and now I'm not talking about internet. No? For example, you have this famous epi epistolar relation of Umberto Eco no? and many other famous people. So you can defend your points, uh, not presentially. No? But the thing, talking about the internet, uh, is this, no? That now the discussions in the internet overcome the limits of a space and time, no? In the, in the, the, the space-time scale. Uh, you can discuss from anywhere at any time with people from any other places. And this is very important. This is also very important in democracy. Why? Because now it allows us to overcome the representation paradigm. It allows us to have a direct, horizontal, and participatory democracy. And this is uh, very, very important to reappropriate what is democracy. And I don't want to speak okay. about what I wanted to say Thank in the you. previous panel. Thank you. Yes, uh, no, please, I'm, please I'm finishing, I'm finishing. The, I'm, I, really, I really mean it. <laughs> and, and this is, okay, and this is what is important, very important for democracy, no? Because now we are arriving to a new paradigm, which is technopolitics. But we will talk about this tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. So are there other questions? Are there other questions? 
There's a question here in the first uh, row. Please a question now, a question to the podium. <laughs> My name is Shadi Shanach, I'm Czechoplestinian. Actually, I will try to frame it as a question. Um, um, I'm, I'm in the support of the previous argument, would you say that um, your arguments um, are arguments in favor of a certain kind of elitism as opposed to egalitarianism? Because, um, well, I would have to summarize what my predecessor basically said, but uh, I, I sense a mixture of a longing for some non-existing reality before and mixture of a fear for something unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, so my okay. question, I think, is self-understanding, elitism versus egalitarianism. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Harasti is perhaps the most... Uh, well, I, would, I would say this is the Voltarian stuff. Voltarian stuff. Um, good elitist protection of egalitarianism. What about that? <laughs> well, I, I, I would like to at least in, in, in conditional defense of anonymity I would like to point out that, uh, that uh, Thomas Paine uh, and the Federalist Papers were published an anonymously and I would say that even if somehow their authors had remained anonymous that they would have retained the impact that, uh, uh, that they had uh, it's nice to know who they are. Um, uh, the Bible also has had a tremendous impact, uh, despite its authors being quite... Uh, uh, Probably I, I, I was very stupid, because uh, you could read me as attacking anonymity as such. I'm talking about a very specific issue, um, quality of... Uh, Opinion is enhanced. This is why we have literature. This is why we have authors. This is why your literature becomes you. It's, it's something that is intrinsic with human nature, with, uh, with, with cognitive uh, processes, with individual achievement, with, with a lot of things. That cannot, we cannot get rid of it. But I didn't speak either against blogging. Uh, actually, uh, there are two kinds of blogging, anonymous, not anonymous. With blogging, the, there is another problem, that it breaks with uh, century-old ethics of journalism, not mixing facts and uh, opinion. Many, many bloggers almost religiously mix facts and opinion. And it takes time until we build up well, uh, something that is... In America, I think we had Fox News doing that many years before bloggers. We had Fox News doing that many years before bloggers. We all have our proper enemy images. Is there a last question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for David. I need, a, I need your professional opinion on a subject which really keeps me very much worried. Uh, there has been many quotations uh, this panel. I would like to contribute another one, which is from Steve Jobs, uh, who I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I quote it uh, literally, uh, but in one of his interviews he said that uh, once you are young and you watch TV, you start suspecting a conspiracy, like, well, there must be some conspiracy behind, and media are trying to dumb us intentionally to turn us into zombies or whatever. And then, uh, well, when maturing, you realize that they are just doing their job by giving people what they want. I assume uh, this statement, well, has this hidden implication behind it that people are stupid. And that's exactly uh, what I've heard from one coming back to this. You know, I appreciate this remark about elitism and, uh, versus egalitarianism. But that's exactly what I once heard from one media tycoon. People are stupid. You, you, they would eat 
uh, what you put before them. And that's really the philosophy. So I'm, I still have problems with that. Okay, I'm working on that. But what I've recently heard, and here I'm coming to the question, what I've recently heard from, uh, well, rather a respectable compu computer guru is that recent statistics about Internet has uh, proven uh, that among Internet users... Uh, only 10% create a content. 90% of Internet users are merely sharing. And only 10% create content. I might uh, put it in a very you know, dilettante way, uh, but I hope you know what I mean. And I just want your opinion on that. Please, uh, uh, please give me some kind of hope or the light in the end of the tunnel. Can I ask what your specific worry, what the specific worry is? <laughs> no, no, I, 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 wanted to, I want to understand what exactly is, what troubles you, or? What troubles me that, uh, okay, uh, that if, um, so you don't find the, the, the figures troublesome, which means that you accept them as correct. Is I it find right? all sorts of things troubling, but <laughs> <laughs> I just would like to respond to, to what you find troubling. Uh, that if only 10 people, 10% uh, of internet users, and okay, we, we, if we perceive the community, this grand anonymous community of internet users, this global community of internet users as in some way representative to the humankind. So if only 10% of those people attempt at creating content and the others do eat what is put before them, then Tycoon was right. I see. And Steve Jobs was right, and that's the problem. I see. That's the key to stupid. That's the key question about stupidity. Well, I would. How ubiquitous it is. I see. Um, well, I would say that I don't think anyone can say for certain what humans are. I mean, people since the dawn since the dawn of civilization, people have been arguing about it. So to say that people are one way or another is to abdicate the responsibility that we determine who we are and we, uh, we influence each other. Um, um, Fox News makes people dumber. They have done studies showing that if you watch Fox News, you are, you know, you are actually more wrong than you are if you don't watch any news whatsoever. So are, those people weren't born stupid. It's something happened in life. And so there is this issue of education that I think uh, is very important here. And I, I think it, it, the real issue is not whether people are that stupid, but um, whether uh, people, whether we could be much better than we are. And I think that is definitely true. And I think that is an immense challenge, and I can't say that I'm always particularly optimistic about it, but um, um, that seem, the, the opinions of tycoons uh, of that sort, whether it applies to people who, cons who consume, I think are, you know, come as a challenge to us to prove them wrong, because they certainly can be proved wrong. Uh, whether they will be proved wrong remains to be seen. <laughs> But, David, it surely shouldn't calm us if we see bloggers copying the method of Fox News. It shouldn't be make us happy. Okay, so um, let's hope that we didn't fall from one catastrophe to the other, mm. from socialism to the Internet. Um, <laughs> perhaps the Internet can also be, like media, uh, uh, a tool of um, becoming less stupid and... Um, when I, I understand David uh, well, um, we still have some potential to become less stupid. So we can go out of this evening with a little hope. And, That's why we're um, here, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I thank you all for your patience and for your interest. And uh, please do not forget uh, this very interesting uh, film tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock at this uh, theater with, uh, of which the name I can't pronounce. Excuse me. And... Um, Benedict 
Fliegau. Benedikt Fliegau. This is cooperation and sharing. And this is our future. Thank you.